Hello everyone, and welcome back to Conspiracy Seed. We're back in the Cryptid's Iceberg Part 4, Tier 4. Uh, I apologize about last week, I did need a little bit of extra time to um, get the script done for this week and next week, and just took a little bit longer than expected. You know, life happened, life got busy, so uh, I apologize that it was just like a the super cut of the Dangerous Prisons Icebergs, but thanks for sticking around, that one actually got a lot of views, so I hope hope you guys enjoyed it um we're just gonna jump right into here to tier four before i start though i am gonna say that i skipped a few creatures in this tier um most of them were actually more just aerial jellyfish i don't know if you remember those from the last tier tier three uh, if you don't right here wait right here one of these two spots Cryptid Iceberg, part three, check it out. Some of them were just aerial jellyfish, and then some were real creatures, and then one was actually a duplicate. Um, but with that said, let's get into tier four. So, shadow people are a person or people that appear as a shadow. They're most common in the paranormal with ghost hunters or caught on camera. People also see these on security cameras and out of the corner of their eyes. It's said that these are negative figures and can be repelled by invoking the name of Jesus. In 1903, several well-respected members of the Van Meter community in Iowa reported a mysterious winged creature that terrorized the town's residents during several nights over a week. The Van Meter visitor is described as having large bat-light wings, left a terrible stench, and could fire a beam of bright light from its forehead. Uh, many of the locals tried to shoot it down, but the bullets appeared to have no effect. Uh, the Hook Island Sea Monster is actually one that I knew about, but I didn't know its name. Uh, this is a giant, roughly 90 foot long, black tadpole looking monster uh, found off of Hook Island. It's said to have a gaping mouth and small teeth. Organism 46B was a 10 foot long, 14 tentacled squid-like creature in Lake Vostok in Antarctica. The lake is located under two miles of ice and was said to have been seen by a Russian scientific team near the Vostok Station Research Outpost. Dr. Anton Padalix claimed to have been part of the first expedition to explore the lake and said, We encountered Organism 46B on our first day. It disabled our radio, which was intentional. It is also able to paralyze prey from a distance of up to 150 feet by releasing its venom into the water. Tragically, my colleague and lifelog friend was killed that way. A Pukwudgie is a human-like creature found in Delaware, Prince Edward Island, and Wampanoag folklore. It is said to be 2-3 to three feet tall, it can appear and disappear at will, shapeshift, lure people to their deaths, use magic, launch poison arrows, and create fire. They're in the Harry Potter series, uh, Pottermore, uh, and in my opinion, they kind of look like the Reiklings from the Dragonborn DLC in Skyrim. You can see it, right? These are pretty low on the iceberg for how well known they are, but elves are everywhere in culture today. They are humanoid beings from Germanic mythos, especially northern Germanic mythos and folklore. They're generally depicted as tiny with green clothes, a pointy hat, and pointed ears. Uh, think of like Santa's elves. However, in more recent media, they're human-sized, not tiny, don't often wear as bright of green, and are more associated with the color gold and like a dark forest green. However, they do still have the pointed ears. Elves in today's culture, we can think of um, Skyrim, Lord of the Rings, the Rice Krispie Elves, um, Link from the Legend of Zelda has pointed ears, it can be argued to be an elf, uh, Buddy the Elf from the movie Elf, not a real elf, he's actually a human, raised by elves. I'm an elf. Well, technically I'm a human, but I was raised by elves. Oh, I'm a human, raised by humans. The Grassman is a tall humanoid that lives in the woods in Ohio, which is where it gets its other name, 
the Ohio Grassman. It's said to be similar to the Bigfoot, but much more aggressive than any other Sasquatch subspecies. It gets its name from the hut that it builds out of tall grass. It was first seen in 1978 when four children reportedly saw it. They told their parents, and when their parents went to investigate, they also saw the creature. They estimated it to be about 300 pounds and instantly just ran away. They were just, no, out of here. That's the smartest thing they could have done. <laughs> Most normal person in Ohio. In Japanese folklore, kitsune are foxes that possess paranormal abilities that increase as they get older and wiser. Kind of jealous, because as I get older, I just don't get wiser, I just get more back pain. Foxes as a whole in Japanese folklore are able to shapeshift into a human form, and the kitsune will use this to trick others. Some other stories portray them as faithful guardians, friends, and lovers. The Minnesota Dogman is often compared to the two other beasts covered earlier on this list, the Michigan Dogman and the Beast of Bray Road. First sighted in 1999 by a man on an Air Force base in St. Louis County. From what I can find, there have been three or four sightings, but nothing out of the ordinary, no excessive livestock deaths or anything that are usually associated with these kind of creatures. An ogre is a legendary monster depicted as a large, hideous, man-like being that eats ordinary human beings, especially infants and children. They frequently appear in mythology, folklore, and fiction throughout the world. They also appear in many classic works of literature and are often associated with fairy tales and legends, often with a taste for infants. The most famous ogre, of course, being our favorite greed monster, Shrek, my man. We went over sirens a little bit ago with the mermaid creature in an earlier tier. Uh, sirens come from Greek mythology. They are human-like beings with luring voices. They are most famous for their scene in the Odyssey, in which Odysseus saves his crew's lives after they try to lure him to crash the ship into rocks. They are used today as a symbol for dangerous temptation. For this next one, we're actually headed back to our favorite state for cryptids, West Virginia. The Sheep Squatch is a woolly-haired cryptid reported in numerous counties throughout West Virginia. Predominantly within the southwestern region, it's uh, depicted as a quadruped about the size of a bear with white wool-like fur. It has a long and pointed head similar to that of a dog, and has long saber-like teeth and a set of horns similar to that of a young goat. I don't know why they didn't call it Goat Squatch. The Sheep Squatch, like many other cryptids within West Virginia, make an appearance in Fallout 76. Bahamut is a monster that dwells deep below, underpinning the support structure that holds up the Earth. In this idea of the world, the Earth is held up by an angel who stands on a gemstone, which is on the back of a cow, all on the base of a fish. That fish is Bahamut. The Cerro Azul monster is a creature photographed near the town of Cerro Azul in Panama in September 2009. A group of four or five teenagers between the ages of 14 and 16 claimed to have been playing near a cave in Cerro Azul when the creature emerged. It walked towards them and fearing for their safety, they attacked it and killed it. They took a picture of its corpse and sent it to Telemetro, a Panamanian TV station. Now if you look at it, Kind of looks similar to the uh, Montauk monster from New York, which cryptozoologist says verifies both of them. Scientists, however, say that it was a brown-throated sloth, a species common in the area. They say that the boys found the creature under the water when it was already dead, it already had its hair washed away, and they just claimed that it was alive when they found it. The Chilean blob was a large mass of tissue found on Puino Beach, Chile in 2003. It weighed 14 tons and measured 39 feet across. Biologists were initially unable to identify it and speculation was that it was the remains of some species of giant octopus previously unknown to scientists. However, the next year in 2004, DNA matched that of a sperm whale. The Cyclops shark is a shark with one eye. It was found in 2011. It has a functional eye just on the front of its head, as if it's a Cyclops from, like, you know, Odysseus. Just one big eye. Just... I wonder how that dude sees. Like, one eye cannot be easy to see out of. My grandma had one eye. She could not drive very well. 
In Canadian folklore, the Manipogo is a lake monster said to live in Lake Manitoba in Canada. The creature got its name in 1960, and it is an homage to Ogopogo, which was also covered earlier in this list. There's also a monster in Lake Winnipegasis called Winnipogo. However, they might be the same creature as the two lakes are connected. Winnipogo wasn't on the iceberg anywhere, so consider this a twofer. The Ropin is either a big bat or a winged dinosaur in New Guinea. It's said to produce a light most likely to attract fish, as that is its main diet. The description of the creature varies wildly. Uh, I've read reports saying that its wingspan is 12 feet. I've read reports saying that its wingspan is 100 feet. No one can quite figure out what this thing looks like, I guess. Except for this one, of course. Uh, the drop bear is a creature in Australian folklore. It is a predatory carnivorous version of the koala that gets its name because it drops on its prey. Locals like to tease tourists with stories of the drop bear uh, and say if they go into the woods that they need to put forks in their hair and if they think a drop bear is around them, they should urinate on themselves. It just, it's just a good old Australian prank. It's just a prank, bro. In Indonesia, we can find the Orangadong. It is essentially an Indonesian Bigfoot. It's similar to Bigfoot in looks, and it's said to live in the jungles and mountains of the country. It generally is shy and nocturnal, and as such, will explore campsites after dark and after people have gone to bed. It will leave behind large footprints and make an odd whistling noise. It's also been reported to have a blood-curdling scream that sounds like a woman in great distress. It sounds like this is just a reason for people in Indonesia not to go outside if they hear their neighbor yelling. <laughs> Australian dinosaurs just refers to the fact that there is a belief that dinosaurs are still alive in Australia, specifically in the Darling Downs. Uh, farmers have reported strange noises, some have reported seeing dinosaurs. That's kind of cool. Australia is a large country and there's not a lot going on. Could be. So this one isn't on this tier, in fact it's not on the iceberg at all, but my cousin asked me if it was on the iceberg, so I took a look and when I couldn't find it, I added it for him. So Josh, this is for you. The Popobawa is an evil spirit that resides in Zanzibar and Tanzia. It's a shapeshifter that has been seen in multiple different forms. They typically visit homesteads at night, have a sulfur odor, attack men, women, and children, and can either physically assault someone, but is most famous for forcible sexual assault of the anus. Thanks, Josh. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something new. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. Shout out to my brother. He went to New York, got me a cool hat. Thanks, TJ. Anyway, I do appreciate each and every one of you watching. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Remember to hit that like button if you liked the video. If not, tell me why in the comments below. Tell me why you didn't like it. I'll catch you guys in the next one.